Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel, and in this video, I'll be removing a massive bald-faced hornet colony that's decided to make its nest in a client's front yard. This nest was absolutely massive at 18 inches tall, and they needed me to remove the nest for them, and brought it home and fed it to my animals. Here's the video, check it out. I'm the Hornet King, and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. So this is a massive bald-faced hornet nest, as you can see. And they are actually not pleased already with me being here. This nest is probably 20 inches tall. Really can't get a good sense of that. But me just having the, you can see how low it is to the ground. Me just having my electric wire sitting here, stirred them up already. So I can't imagine having mowed under this for last couple months. All right, so I'm gonna get started with it. Not to be pleased. So this particular species is Dulica vespula maculata, AKA the bald-faced hornet. Now bald-faced hornets are actually an aerial nest building yellow jacket species. There's only one other aerial nest building yellow jacket species in the same class that we have in the Northeast, and that's Dulica vespula arenaria. Despite the fact that one's black and white and the other one's black and yellow, they're both yellow jacket species, but they are very, very different in how they look. And bald-faced hornets actually make a larger, more robust nest than Arenaria does. Arenaria's envelope is a little bit softer, but it's virtually the same type of structure, but their combs are almost identical. The only difference being is that Arenaria pretty much makes a very uniform shaped comb. Their comb is very, very round, but Dulica vespula maculata, their nest can vary in size and in shape, and it's not always exact circular. Colonies can be very, very sensitive or very docile. Now, the bald-faced hornets get a bad rap that they're super aggressive, that they're very defensive of their colonies, and they attack everybody for no reason. But really, they don't have a super aggressive or defensive mentality. It really just depends on the colony, the location where they built their nest, how exposed they are. So the more exposed that the nest is in the environment, the more defensive they're going to be if something comes close to proximity to the nest. So if the nest was built inside of a bush or up underneath of an overhang somewhere that's really protected, they're not going to be nearly as defensive as, say, a nest like this one that's out in the middle of the open. All the ones swarming around me right now are coming back to forage. I don't think very many came out of the nest at all. And if they did, he came out from another hole that I didn't see. It didn't look like they did. All I did was set my extension cord reel near this nest, I mean, probably within 10 feet. And they were the ones that were coming out that were get, dive bombing it, giving it warning shots, which is basically they fly out and bump into it. They don't actually attack it or sting it. And they'll do that with me too. So if I come walking out with my suit on, sometimes I get pelted in the veil, but I don't get stung. They just headbutt me. And then they fly back to the nest and they warn everybody like, hey, there's something amiss out here. We might want to come out and, and take a gander at it. So they'll come out and they'll do warning wings where they sit their wings like up in a V shape, getting ready to fly. So usually when I see that, I tell folks, get back because they're going to start flying any minute now or any second now. So that's pretty much what was happening here. They were very defensive of the colony because they're so out in the open and very exposed. With an aerial nest building yellow jacket species like this one, like Delica vespula maculata and Delica vespula arenaria, they encase their comb in multiple layers of envelope, but in a very conical shape. German yellow jackets and southern yellow jackets and eastern yellow jackets all encase their nests as well, but not in the similar like conical shape. Most of the time it's in more of a round shape in those cavity nest building species or subterranean nest building species. But with bald-faced hornets and Dulica vespula arenaria, they both make very conical-shaped nests. They're almost like elongated, rather than just being a round nest. Now it's 
still pretty stirred up about my uh, vacuum nozzle. So when I'm removing a nest like this, I usually just sit the vacuum nozzle right at the entranceway perpendicular to it. I don't slide it inside the hole. That's what she said. If I stick the vacuum nozzle into the entranceway, the workers and the guards inside the nest will not come out and the foragers returning from foraging will not be able to get in. So I'm not really going to be doing anything that's beneficial. So I just sit it perpendicular to the entranceway and that way workers and guards can come out and get vacuumed up and foragers as they come back from foraging, unbeknownst to them, they'll fly right in towards that entranceway and get vacuumed up into the nozzle. It works really, really well. It's not a system that needs to be corrected. So I get a lot of comments about that. Like, well, why don't you just shove the nozzle into the entranceway? Well, that's why. Uh, when you do this enough, you really find the little nuances that work really, really well. And this is one of them. I get asked a lot too, why they swarm all around me and why are, does it seem like they're leaving and then flying away? They're swarming around me and they're attacking me as they come back from foraging oftentimes if I'm right next to the nest. So even though I'm standing there with the nozzle and I'm catching a lot of the ones trying to escape the nest, the ones that are foraging or coming back from foraging, if they get courageous enough, they will fly into the entrance wing and get sucked up in the vacuum nozzle. But most of the time, they kind of just float around me. They'll start attacking me. They'll, they'll pelt into my veil. They'll, they'll attack my gloves. They'll attack my phone. And then after they settle down a little bit, then they fly back to the nest, and that's when they get vacuumed up. But typically, if I'm just sitting here, some of the ones will not go back to the nest. They'll just keep flying around, flying around until I remove myself from that location. So that's why I end up grabbing this longer extension wand and attaching that so that way I can just prop it up with the nest and then move out of the way. And then you'll notice they all start flying right back to the nest once I'm out of that proximity. And it really, really works like a charm. Of course, this is damage control. So the more that I get vacuumed up from as they're coming back from foraging, that's a lot less of them that are going to be triggering that pheromone response over and over and over again. So the sooner I batten down that swarm, the faster that I'm going to be able to deal with this without having a bunch of them flying around and pelting me and things. And as you can see, I noticed that my veil was undone. I forgot to zip up my veil. Now this happens more often, I like to admit but I couldn't just stop in the middle of the removal. So I was only able to zip it up once I was able to back away from the nest and kind of get my bearings for a few seconds. But luckily with bald face hornets, they're not latchers. They're not ones that like cling to my suit and then try to crawl up underneath my veil. If this was Eastern yellow jackets or Southern yellow jackets, I would have found out that that veil was not zipped up a lot sooner by the yellow jackets climbing into my veil before I would have noticed it on my own. So I spent a lot of time here just letting that vacuum nozzle run and run and run. I had actually left from the client's house while this was running to run to a hardware store to get some trash bags because I actually ran out of my trash bags and I forgot. So I ran out and let this thing run and just vacuum up as many of the foragers coming back as I possibly could. I don't like removing this nest. Like some people will ask, like, why don't I just bag the nest and just clip it off the branch and then just leave? Well, because there's a lot that are out foraging. So if I just remove the nest, They'll come back from foraging and then they'll just be floating all around the lower branches of this tree. And I won't have a very easy way of vacuuming them back up. I'd have to use some sprays. So when I leave the nest here like this, the nest acts as like a target. So now they know where home is. So I just leave the vacuum nozzle right at that entranceway. It's kind of like their, their bullseye. Like, hey, we got to head right for that hole. Even though I'm not getting any new workers or guards coming out of the nest, I'm able to get a lot of the foragers coming back from foraging. So I'll come back periodically and just like tap on the top of the nest for any foragers that came back and got past the nozzle and got inside the nest or any workers that just haven't been venturous enough to come out. I'll tap on the top of the nest and that stirs them up and then they drop out and then I'll be able to vacuum them up. And there were a lot of males and queens inside this nest too. So they had released a lot of their males and queens already. So I'd spent some time and I've noticed that there was quite a few of them coming out into the nozzle as well. This is actually pretty early in the morning, too. I think it's around like 7 o'clock in the morning. When I do removals during the summertime at my peak seasons, which is usually from like mid-August to late November, I'm doing about nine removals a day. I'm driving all over God's creation. So here's a little screenshot of my trek for that day of September 20th from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. when I got home. So this just goes to show you how many miles I drive. I usually do about nine removals a day, and I get home pretty pretty late in the evening. So this was one was a little bit earlier. Oftentimes I get home around 9 p.m., but this one I got home around 7 p.m. All right, so I let this run for about 25 minutes. So I'm just going to bag it up now, get it out of here so I can get rolling to my next appointment.
So I do have to take the nests apart once I get home. So they're inside the bag. So some of them may have hatched out of there or some workers or some guards that maybe gotten courageous and came out of the nest while it's in the bag. Um, so, so I just have to open up the bag and pull the nest out and just tear the envelope off so I can start vacuuming up all the remaining workers and things off the comb. Sometimes I'm able to get the queen, but oftentimes the queen, I get her without even knowing it. I just vacuum her right up. But even if the queen were to leave, she's going to die. She's not going to be able to survive without this colony. She actually can't fly very well since laying all those eggs. Her abdomen's, abdomen is really engorged, so she's not able to just fly away. So oftentimes I'll just sit here and just open up all the envelope, just take one big handful and just pull it off the comb, and then start separating the comb layers and pulling all the workers out from in between those layers. I don't like to have any yellow jackets inside the nest when I toss them out for my animals. Not so much for them, because they're not going to really be defensive of this nest anymore, but just in case, you know, I'm wearing shorts and things, I don't want to get stung on my legs uh, if one were to land on me or something. So I just vacuum everybody off uh, and prep the nest up before I take it down to my animals. All of the envelope that you see here gets just thrown onto my compost pile, which is really just a pile of envelope and yellow jackets from the vacuum that I just stack up over the course of a season right at the base of my maple tree. That stuff will biodegrade and add to fertilizer for the soil and things. And what's inside my vacuum is just a little bit of the water and Dawn dish soap, so it's not going to hurt it to be dumped onto the ground. But the size of this nest is absolutely massive. I mean, there were just tons of queen cells, male cells, and worker cells in this nest. So I just ball up the envelope. There's still some workers and things that are in there. It's not going to hurt them to be flying away and things. They're not going to be able to start another colony or anything. And I don't care if there's any bald-faced hornets around my property. I think I had seven relocated bald-faced hornet nests on my property this past season. So a couple little extras here and there is not going to be a problem for me. So I just separate a few more of the layers. This is about mainly queen cells here on the top. And then what's underneath there is a lot of worker cells. But you can see a lot of them have already hatched out. The white dots that you see, the white bubbles, those are silk caps and underneath there. They're going through their metamorphosis from a larva to a pupae and then into an adult wasp. So they'll chew that paper off and then they'll hatch and emerge as an adult wasp. People often ask too, like, do my chickens eat the adults? My chickens don't eat the mature adults, but they'll eat the freshly hatched adults. So if a an adult hatches from one of the cells while I'm driving home or something, they still have that film on them. The uh, chickens and the emus and the rhea will still eat them that way. Uh, but if they had been hatched for a while, if they're in all the workers inside my vacuum, they won't eat those. That's why I dump them up on my compost pile rather than giving them to the animals. Good there, birdies.
right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos or something like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. And that way you guys get an update anytime I do post a video. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel. And I'll catch you on the next video.